guidance and deep inspiration to many, many people in this country. His Holiness Black David Vinasha Narasinga Maharaj took Sanya's initiation in Mayapur in 1994. Before then, Maharaj was already living a very strict life of Sadhana Bhakti, and so the Sanya's life simply enhanced his austerities and strictness in Krishna consciousness. Whoever gets to know Maharaj admires him and respects his sincere and faithful practice and chanting of the holy name of Lord Krishna. Actually, Maharaj walks his talk. He is an initiating guru and has given shelter to many devotees and is making so many devotees in China, in Thailand, and many other places. Maharaj is also a teacher at the Mayapur Institute, and every year he comes to Mayapur Institute to teach during the Kartik period. So we are so fortunate to have this exalted Vaishnava this morning, who will give us the discussion on Srimad Bhagavatam. So let us all welcome Maharaj by chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, 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 Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Rama. So Maharaj, yeah. welcome to the West African platform, Zoom platform. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Narayanam Namaskritam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat. Nasta praeshu vabhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtaki. So we're reading first canto, chapter 3, text number 26. Avatara hiya sankhyaya. Hare Sattva Nidhirdvija Yata Vidasina Kuya Surasashu Sahasrasha Avatara incarnations, he certainly, Asankhya innumerable, Hare of Hari the Lord. Sattva Nidir, ocean of goodness. Dvija, the Brahmanas, Yata, as it is. Avidathina, inexhaustible. Kuya, rivulets. I can't see what this, these words are because we've got this screen on. Anyway, of, of vast lakes, sure are. Sahasraja, thousands of. Oh. Is there any way you can? The pictures are covering the the, the letters, the words. Yeah, how do I move all these peoples from here? Yeah, is there any way we can move the pictures out? Push, move. Just it's let me use... Pictures, please. I'll just use my own text. I've got the text here. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the pictures. But, yeah. Your thing. Let me see. You're covering up everything. Yeah. 
yeah. The list purport, the no translation first of all, right? Translation. All Brahmanas, the incarnations of the Lord are innumerable, the rivulets flowing from inexhaustible sources of water. Purport. The list of incarnations of the personality of Godhead given herein is not complete. It is only a partial view of all the incarnations. There are many others such as Sri Hai Griva, Hari, Hamsa, Prishni Garba, Vibhu, Satyasen, Vaikuntha, Sarva Bhomma, Vishvakshena, Dharma Setu, Sudama, Yogeshwara, Brihad Banu and others of the bygone ages. Sri Prahlad Maharaj said in his prayers, my Lord, you manifest as many incarnations as there are species of life, namely the aquatics, the vegetables, the reptiles, the birds, the beasts, the men, the demigods, etc., just for the maintenance of the faithful and the annihilation of the unfaithful. You advent yourself in this way in accordance with the necessity of the different yugas. In the Kali Yuga, you have incarnated garbed as a devotee. This incarnation of the Lord in the Kali Yuga is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There are many other places, both in the Bhagavatam and in other scriptures, in which the incarnation of the Lord as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explicitly mentioned. In the Brahma Samhita also, it is said indirectly that although there are many incarnations of the Lord, such as Rama, Narsimha, Varaha, Machya, Kurma, and many others, the Lord Himself sometimes incarnates in person. Lord Krishna and Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are not therefore incarnations but are the original source of all incarnations. This will be clearly explained in the next slokas. So the Lord is the inexhaustible source for innumerable incarnations which are not always mentioned but such incarnations are distinguished by specific extraordinary feats which are impossible to be performed by any living being. That is the general test to identify an incarnation of the Lord, directly and indirectly empowered. Some incarnations mentioned above are almost plenary portions. For instance, the Kumaras are empowered with transcendental knowledge, Sri Narad is empowered with devotional service. Maharaj Prithu is an empowered incarnation with executive function. The Matsya incarnation is directly a plenary portion. So the innumerable incarnations of the Lord are manifest all over the universes constantly without cessation as water flows constantly from waterfall. Translation again. O Brahmanas, the incarnations of the Lord are innumerable, like riv rivulets flowing from inexhaustible sources of water. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chatsuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam yena bhutale Swayam rupa kadamayam Dadati swapadantikam Bandeham shri guru shri yata padakamalam Shri gurun vaishnavamscha Shri rupam sakrajatam sahagana raganatan vitam tam sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam 
Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nitamstya Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu Dhinna Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishapanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Vacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Ghoravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Sutta, Sutta Goswami is speaking to the sages in the Naimasharanya forest Shonakarishi wanted to know about the Lord and his different incarnations. So Sutta Goswami began describing some of the Lord's different forms. As Prabhupada mentions in the purport, this was only a few of the Lord's incarnations because the Lord has so many incarnations, impossible to mention all of them. I said, just as there are as many waves on the ocean, there are incarnations of the Lord. So, we hear in the pastimes of uh, Prahlad Maharaj, he also mentions about how the Lord incarnates at different times and in different yugas. In the purport, Prabhupada refers to that verse, how Prahlad is offering his prayers to Lord Nishringadev and he mentions about the Lord's incarnations in so many different forms and different species of life. In that verse also, Prahlad Maharaj mentions how the Lord does not come in the Kali Yuga, but he's known as Tri Yuga. And this point was discussed in Jagannath Puri, in the times of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gopinath Acharya was trying to convince his brother-in-law, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, about the identity of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he was telling him, you know, that, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's not just an ordinary sannyasi. He's the Supreme Lord Himself. He's actually the Lord. He's the Supreme Personality of Godhead who's come. But Sarvabhoma Bharacharya was saying to Gopinath Acharya that Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said, Oh, come on, the Lord doesn't come in the Kali Yuga. The Lord is Tri Yuga. But then Gopinath Acharya says to him, you don't know the philosophy. Maybe you didn't study the Bhakti Shastri or something, right? Maybe you need to go back to Bhakti Shastri or Bhakti Vaibhav. Because in Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, Sambhavami Yuge Yuge, that He comes in every Yuga. He comes in every age. But He doesn't come as a Leela avatar. Right? There's no Leela avatar in the Kali Yuga, but the Lord still comes. And He comes, He has His Yuga avatar. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
is like that. He's, in one way, he's a yuga avatar because he came externally to establish the yuga dharma. Kali yuga dharma, hari nam sankirtan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu externally comes to begin the sankirtan, to propagate the yuga dharma. So, this point was made by Gopinath Acharya to understand, to convince his brother-in-law about the actual position of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then in the purport we see Prabhupada mentioning here how Lord Krishna and Lord Chaitanya, who came at this particular time, Lord Krishna of course coming 5,000 years ago, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu some 500 years ago, they are directly the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They're not just only avatars. Now, usually in Kali Yuga, it will be an avatar who comes. And usually in the Dwapara Yuga, Krishna who comes also will come, you know, to do the work of the avatar. He will come, avatars come from Shirodakashai Vishnu. They're avatars, they descend from the spiritual world. But Lord Krishna and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who came most recently, they are directly the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They are not just avatars, but they are the origin of all the avatars. They are the original Supreme Lord. Lord Krishna usually comes and his mission is paritranaya sadunam vinas jaya chaduskritam to give pleasure to his devotees and to annihilate the demons. So. That was, in, let's, let's say, his usual reason for appearing, to kill the demons, give some pleasure to the devotees. But what happened, once in every day of Brahma, and every day of Brahma, there's a thousand yugas, right? Bhagavad Gita says, Sahasra Yuga Paryam Tamma Haryam Brahma No Vidu. And one day of Brahma, you have a thousand, millenn a thousand ages, 1,000 cycles of the four ages, 1,000 Divya Yugas. So, in one day of Brahma, the Personality of Godhead will come. That's how rare it is that the Supreme Personality of Godhead will come. That only one time in one day of Brahma, out of 1,000 Kali Yugas, out of 1,000 Dwapara Yugas, one time the Supreme Personality of Godhead will come. Other times it's not the Supreme Lord, but it's some avatar who's, you know, he may also be doing the work. He's also, if he comes in the Kali Yuga, he will also propagate the chanting of the Holy Name. Or if he comes in Dwapara Yuga as Krishna, he will also kill the demons. But the Lord Krishna who came 5,000 years ago, he's very special because he comes to give not just only some pleasure to the devotees, but he comes to teach or to show the mood of uh, Raga Bhakti, the mood of spontaneous devotion. He comes to, to give the greatest pleasure to the devotees through the performance of things like Rasa Lila. This is very special, this pastimes of the Lord with his gopis. And of course the greatest devotees also came. Srimati Radharani also comes and she takes part in the Lord's pastimes. Now, it's, it's very special when the Supreme Lord comes to perform these pastimes. And similarly, you have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is coming, he is a, a special incarnation because the Lord doesn't usually come in the Kali Yuga, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is 
a covered incarnation. He doesn't reveal himself as the Supreme Lord because he knows in the Kali Yuga there will be so many imposters, so many people claiming that they're the Lord. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very careful in presenting himself that he didn't allow people to declare him to be the Supreme Lord. He wanted to conceal his identity. He came in the mood of the devotee because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doesn't just come only to perform the Yuga Dharma, but he comes to taste that mood of Ragabhav, the mood of the, the mood which Srimati Radharani had in her devotional service to Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wants to relish this pleasure, this highest pleasure. Because when he came as Lord Krishna, he, he saw that Srimati Radharani was enjoying more than him. The Lord gets some pleasure being with Radharani, but he saw that she's getting more pleasure. Now Krishna likes to enjoy. He's the supreme enjoyer. He wants to enjoy more than anybody. But he saw this Radharani is getting more pleasure than I am getting. How is this? I want to enjoy, but she's enjoying more than me. Therefore, Krishna decided he has to come as a devotee, and this is why he came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the mood of the devotee. And externally, he's propagating the Yuga Dharma, the chanting of Hare Krishna, but internally, he's cultivating the mood of Srimati Radharani. He's cultivating that mood of spontaneous love for Krishna, the mood of Radharani, the total absorption in service to Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes to experience that pleasure, not just simply only the pleasure of chanting the holy name and propagating the holy name, but the pleasure of experiencing the love which Radha has for Krishna. And he comes to give that to people also. And this was appreciated by Rupa Goswami when he met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He offered this prayer, Namo Mahabadanaya Krishna Prema Pradayati. Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gaur Tivishinama. He's praying that you are the most merciful of all of the incarnations of Krishna because you are giving freely the highest thing, love of God, Krishna Prem. All right? And Krishna Prem. This, this is being distributed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wants everyone to get this love of God and the way in which they can get it is by developing that same mood which is the mood of the gopis. So therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all of his followers, they follow in the footsteps of the gopis of Vrindavan. And the best of all the gopis is the Srimati Radharani. And they try to cultivate that mood which she has in her loving service to Krishna. So this is very special incarnation. But we see how the Lord has many, many different incarnations according to the need of the particular time and the situation. Just like when the, when the earth fell into the bottom of the universe. So at that time, Swayam Bhuvamanu and his wife Satarupa, they were supposed to help Lord Brahma in were doing, helping to populate the universe. But they saw the earth planet had fallen into the bottom of the universe. So they approached Brahma, what to do, you know, the earth is in the bottom of the universe. At that time then the Lord comes from the nostril of Brahma and he comes in a very special form. He comes in the form of a boar. And the purpose of the boar is 
so that he can dive into the bottom of the Garbhodak ocean and he can pick up the earth planet on his tusks and he can put it back in position. And at the same time, he also has to meet with the demon Haranyaksha. So, different reasons according to the, the particular time and place, that form of the Lord as Varaha is very appropriate for the Lord's mission at that time. And similarly, when he comes as Lord Nishingadev, we know that Prahlad Maharaj was being questioned by his demonic father, Haranyakashipu was asking Prahlad that you say your God is everywhere. So if he's everywhere, is he also here in this pillar? And Prahlad, because Prahlad is Uttama Adhikari, so Prahlad, he told his father, yeah, he must be there also, he's also there. And Prahlad actually, he's actually seeing the Lord, he's actually seeing the Lord there. So Haranyakashipu then of course broke the pillar and Lord Nishingadev appears. And Lord Nishingadev has to have the appropriate form to keep intact all the different benedictions which Lord Brahma had given to Haranyakashipu. So the Lord comes in a form which is not man, it's not animal, but half man, half animal. And like then he has these long, the lion has long nails and he can rip apart Haranyakashipu. Although Haranyakashipu's body is so hard that Indra's thunderbolt, Indra, Indra's weapon, Brajra, could not even penetrate the body of Haranyakashipu. But Lord Nasringadev, by his nails, he could rip apart Haranyakashipu and take his intestines and put it round his neck as a garland. So the Lord does all these different things. He, he, every form which the Lord assumes is very perfect for that particular situation. He knows the particular need and he can adapt. Just like we hear about in Vaikuntha, if you read the Brihad Bhagavat Amrita, describes about Vaikuntha, life in Vaikuntha, how the living entities there, they all have yoga cities and they can take any form they like, at any time they like. They can change their form, and they can take different forms, they can take a form like a house, they can take a form like a tree, they can become birds, they can assume any different form they like, just by thinking about it. This is one of the opulences which the residents of Vaikuntha enjoy. So the people in Vaikuntha have that power. Certainly the Lord of Vaikuntha, he also has that power to the greatest extent. Therefore, when the Lord comes into this world, he can assume all of these different forms for his pleasure, just simply to give pleasure to his devotees and to fulfill the mission. What is the mission of the Lord? Well, he has to ensure that, that everything is going on nicely within the creation, that there's no unnecessary disturbance. Sometimes the demons are giving trouble to the demigods. So the Lord has to come to adjust the situation. Just like we know how Bali Maharaj had taken over the heavenly planets. So at that time the Lord comes as Vamanadev and he has a has very special form as a, the dwarf and he comes and approaches Bali Maharaj to get charity. So very appropriate. Bali Maharaj is in the mood of giving charity, he'd been told give charity to the Brahmins, very good. You get a lot of, a lot of mercy. So Lord Vamanadev comes and begs the charity, give me three steps of land. And Bali Maharaj is happy. So we see the, the Lord coming in the higher planets there as Vamanadev. Sometimes he's coming in the higher planets, sometimes he's coming in the lower planets. We see he, he goes into the lower planet. Of course, after, after uh, after Lord Vamanadev had taken the, everything away from Bali Maharaj, he sent 
Bali Maharaj down into the lower regions, which is the place where the demons reside. But Bali, but Bali Maharaj was told by Lord Vamanadev that I will also come with you and I will be your, your doorkeeper. Nobody will disturb you. And so the Lord is residing there, taking care of uh, Bali Maharaj and the lower regions in the universe. So the Lord, by his transcendental potencies, he can go anywhere and everywhere, and he can assume any form he likes. Of course, these things are inconceivable to ordinary conditioned souls. Ordinary conditioned souls cannot understand how the Lord can have inconceivable potencies. And you see, to convince people about the existence of God and how he can come in these different forms, people, first of all, have to accept that there is such a thing as achincha shakti, inconceivable potencies. And the possessor of these inconceivable potencies are the Supreme Lord Himself. First, of course, people, first of all, have to accept, they have to admit that there is a God, there is, a, there is someone behind the creation, there's some supreme intelligence. So if they get that far to agree that there must be God, there must be a God, there must be some person there behind the creation. Of course, that takes a lot of piety just to get people to admit that God is a person. People often very atheistic, they, they think, oh, if God is a person, he must be like me, he must be limited, he must be imperfect, he must have so many bad habits, he must be can't be much different from me. They cannot understand how God can be the perfect transcendental person and he can have a form which is, which is not material. People are so conditioned, they're so limited in their thinking, it's very difficult for them to understand that God can have such inconceivable power. We try to understand everything by our own limited mind and limited senses. And in this way, we can never really progress out of this material world. Conditioned souls, our conditioning is so deep, identifying with the body, thinking, I am this body. This is the conditioned state of materialistic people. And it, it goes very deep, it goes deep, because we've been in the material world a very long time. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15, Krishna describes how there are two kinds of living entities. There's the eternally conditioned souls and the eternally liberated souls. The liberated souls reside in the spiritual world. Conditioned souls, we're all here in this world of birth and death. And our condition, our conditioning begins with this attachment to the body, thinking, I am this body, everything belongs to me. We want to go beyond the material body. We want to get free from the clutches of this material existence. And therefore, we have to get great mercy. And that is why the Lord comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to give everyone the greatest mercy. Of course, Prabhupada explains when the Lord comes, he has to perform wonderful activities. And also, the Lord position should be described in scriptures. There should be some appropriate verses in the scripture to actually reckon, by which we can recognize this person as an incarnation of God. So in Srimad Bhagavatam, we have uh, the, the sons of Rishabdev, the, uh, the What's it, what are they called again? The, the nine sons of Lord Rish, the Na, Navyogendras. So, 
Karabhajana Muni, one of the nine Yogendras, they're all sons of Rishabhdev, they were all preachers, traveling, preaching. They met with Maharaj Nimi, and Maharaj Nimi wanted to know about the Lord's incarnations in each age, and Karabhajana Muni described how the Lord comes in each yuga, and he described also in Kali Yuga how the Lord comes. Krishna Varnam Tavish Akrishnam Sangha Pangustra Parshadam Yagnai Sankirtan Praye Yajantihi Sumedha Shaha. In the, in the Kali Yuga, the Lord will come along with his associates and uh, he will not be blackish. In, other, in the previous Yuga, in the Dwapara Yuga, he had the black form of Krishna. But in the Kali Yuga, he's not blackish, he's Akrishna. Akrishna, right? Actually, the Lord comes in the yellow form. That was described also by Gargamuni. When Gargamuni came to do the name giving ceremony of Lord Krishna and Balaram, at that time he described to Nanda Maharaj, he said, This child of yours has taken birth in different ages, in different colors. And he described that previously he had the white color and he had the red color. Now he has this blackish color and he has also yellow color. And so it was predicted that Gargamuni was, he, he could, he's an astrologer, he could tell about the previous lives. And he told Nanda Maharaj that. So, Karabhajana Muni mentions Kali Yuga, the Lord comes and he's a Krishna. He, he, he's enge but he's engaged in Krishna Varna. He's doing the work. He's propagating the mission of Krishna. He's chanting the name of Krishna and he's preaching the message of Krishna. Just as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going everywhere and he was giving the holy name to everyone. And he was telling people also to read the book about Krishna, read the Bhagavad Gita. He was instructing people like this. This is Krishna Varna, doing the work of Krishna, the mission of Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was doing like that, along with all of his associates. And it's mentioned how intelligent people will take part in the Sankirtan movement. Right? Sumedha Saha. Sumedha, Sumedha Saha. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about worshippers of demigods, that they are Alpa Medha Saha. They have a small brain. Prabhupada said, actually, their brain is like, like stool. It's all filthy, it's all contaminated, because they're worshipping gods who are not really meant to be worshipped. They're worshipping gods who are not supreme. But those who take part in the Sankirtan and the chanting of the holy names of Krishna, they have purified intelligence. They are, they are called Sumidasa. So this verse from the 11th canto Srimad Bhagavatam, this is one verse which is very authoritative, indicating the Lord's incarnation in the Kali Yuga and his activity. And then there's another verse from the Mahabharata also, which mentions how the Lord will come, how in the beginning of his life he'll be engaged in householder life, he'll be a householder, and he'll, his body will be covered with sandalwood paste, and all of his limbs will be very attractive. And then later on in his life, he will renounce. And he will be a sannyasi, and he will carry the, the symbols of the sannyasi, and he will be equipoised. He will be peaceful. And at the same time, he will give fear to the Mayavadis, the impersonalists, that they will be afraid of him. So this was, again, another verse which predicts Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
So people want to know evidence of the power of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We, we see, we see his activities, how he is actually God, how he could perform so many wonderful activities, uh, delivering people like the leper Vasudev, his body was filled with leprosy. He purified him, took away the leprosy and gave him a completely rejuvenated, healthy body. That was one pastime of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then another time we see how the Buddhist master came. The Buddhist master was trying to humiliate Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he brought a big plate with contaminated food to offer it to Lord Chaitanya. And at that time a big bird appeared and picked up the plate, rose up in the sky, and then it dropped the plate on the head of the Buddhist monk. And all the different dishes with the preparation then, they fell on the heads of his disciples. So in this way the, the Buddhist monk, he was knocked unconscious when the plate fell on his head. So all the disciples of the Buddhist monk, they came to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and they understood Chaitanya Mahaprabhu must be very great. They asked him, please save our teacher. Can you please revive him? Please be merciful to him. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told them all, okay, you have to chant the holy name, chant Hare Krishna. So they all chanted Hare Krishna and in this way the Buddhist master revived. So Prabhupada said that initially the Buddhist master, he was the guru of these people, but now they became his guru because they were giving him the holy name of Krishna. You see, this is the, the, the duty of the spiritual master, to give the disciple the chanting of the holy name. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu initiated the Sankirtan movement. He empowered his different followers like Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. He instruct, after instructing them, he sent them to Vrindavan to excavate the holy places of Krishna's pastimes and to write books on the philosophy of Krishna consciousness and also to establish temples of worship of Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed a lot of miracles through his devotees, through empowering people to do this kind of work. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself came to Vrindavan and he, he discovered Radha Kund. Nobody knew where is Radha Kund. It was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who could, only who could find out where is Radha Kund. And he told everyone, this is the Radha Kund, this is the place. And so at that time it was a rice field. So they had to excavate the place and later on Raghunath Goswami came and resided there and then some wealthy man came and donated money and they could make the nice kunds there for Radha Kund and Shama Kund. But when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Vrindavan 500 years ago there was, there was nothing much there in Vrindavan. It was just jungle, wild animals. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, with the help of the Goswamis, they excavated all the places of Krishna's pastimes and they established the main temples of Vrindavan. And then so many books also. These books were based on the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed the, his followers according to Shastra. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed many miracles. We see how Lord Nityananda delivered Jagai and Madhai and made them fallen souls into great devotees. We see how Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu initiated this preaching of the Holy Name. He predicted the Holy Name would be chanted in every town and village all over the world. Prithiviti achiyat nagar adigram sarvatra pracharhaibe moranam. 
So nobody ever thought it was possible. But by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and through his devotees, the holy name is now being chanted all over the world. And so this is miracles that people from fallen backgrounds with bad habits could give up all their bad habits and become devotees of Krishna. This is only possible by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would never, he never allowed people to say that he was God. One time Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, because Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he actually understood Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's identity. First of all, Ch Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya had been preaching to Lord Chaitanya. He'd been speaking the Vedanta for seven days and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just sat and listened. And so on the eighth day, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya got really frustrated and said, you know, I'm talking so much to you, you don't even ask any questions. Isn't there anything you want? If you don't understand, you can tell me and I will explain again. But then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, I already understand Vedanta, but what you're saying, what you're explaining, that's not clear. I can't understand that. The meanings you give, I can't understand what you're talking about. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went on to explain everything about Vedanta. And so Sarvabhoma Bharacharya was surprised. And so then he asked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, then explain to me the Admarama Sloka. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to him, said, you explain it first. So Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he explained it in, I think, eight different ways. And then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was given the verse to explain. And Lord Chaitanya went on to explain it. And so many, how many, 64 different ways or something? I can't remember how many. So many different ways. Lord, and Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was amazed that, wow, this man is so amazing, he's so brilliant. Nobody else could have knowledge like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was so much older in age, so, you know, greater learning, greater, not, apparently greater learning, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is God himself, so he knows everything. He knows everything about the scriptures and he can explain everything. And so then, then Lord Chaitanya revealed his form as Radha and Krishna to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. He, uh, he revealed the Sajbhut form, that was Sajbhut. He saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a sannyasi with the danda and the water pot and then he had two hands holding the flute and then two hands holding the bow and arrow as Lord Rama. So Lord Rama, Lord Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they're all one, but different times, different incarnations. So Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, then he could understand this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is actually the Supreme Lord. And he surrendered, he became a devotee. He became, he's convinced, he actually saw that this is the Lord, he's come to deliver me and, and he was Mahaprabhu was convincing him about the power of bhakti, that the process is bhakti, the process is not gyan, it's not logic, but the process is bhakti, your logic is useless, you're just getting nowhere, you don't understand anything. Just chant the holy name and develop your devotion. This is the real path to understanding Krishna. So Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was so convinced, he became a devotee, and then he wrote uh, he wrote a couple of verses about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describing his position. So he wrote them on palm leaves. But in those days, of course, there's no paper or anything. Everything's just written on palm leaves. If you go to the Vrindavan Research Institute, you can see they have some of the original writings of the Goswamis written on palm leaves. So Sarvabhoma Bharacharya, he wrote a couple of verses describing Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he wrote them on palm leaves and he gave them to one devotee, he gave them, I think, he gave them to Jagadananda, told Jagadananda, give these to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So 
before they gave them to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, another devotee, Mukunda Datta, he took the two palmleaves first of all, and he saw what was written, and he saw there were two verses, and he copied these verses, and he put, wrote these verses on a wall somewhere. And then they gave the leaves back. And then when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got the leaves, and he saw the leaves, then he ripped up the leaves. He didn't want anybody to see these verses, because these verses were both declaring Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to be God. Right? Sarva Bhuma, but one of the verses which Sarva Bhuma wrote was the uh, Vairagya Vidya Nija Bhakti Yoga Shikshaka Esha Purusha Purana Shri Krishna Chaitanya Sharira Dari Kripambudir Yastvam Praham Aham Prapadye. That uh, Sarva Bhuma Bhattacharya describes I offer my obeisances to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is an ocean of mercy, and he has come to teach us what had almost been lost in the course of time. He's come to teach us knowledge along with de detachment. Vairagya, Vidya, Nija Bhakti Yoga. So he's come to teach us this detachment and knowledge along with devotion. And so I offer my obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, was, he, he would be pleased to read the verses, but at the same time, he didn't want people to think that he's saying that he's God. So he ripped up the verses. But the devotees had already copied them. So they, these two verses, they became in the heart, they were put in the hearts of the devotees. And they remembered that this is the real position of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he's teaching us these very special things by coming in the Kali Yuga. So the incarnation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very important. How many people can understand? We know there may be many people who worship Krishna, but not everyone's a follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And even those who follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not everyone follows Rupa Goswami. We are not just followers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but we follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is described for us by Rupa Goswami. He reveals the actual teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because it was Rupa Goswami who got personally taught by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was taught for 10 days there at the Dash Ashwamedha Ghat at Prayag before he went to Vrindavan. And then Sanatana Goswami, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spent two months in Banaras teaching Sanatan Goswami. So these two were the leaders of the Goswamis, and they went to Vrindavan, and they were both, they were not so young at this time. They were already elderly people, older people, and they retired to Vrindavan. They left, left their householder life to go to join Lord Chaitanya's movement, and they compiled so many wonderful books. Later on, of course, their nephew, Jiva Goswami, came, Jiva Goswami, he is the, the son of Balaba, who was the brother of Rupa and Sanatan. Balaba had died earlier, but he had left one son, Jiva, and so Jiva Goswami came and joined his two uncles, and Jiva Goswami had a very big contribution to make there. He wrote so many books, and after his uncles passed away, Jiva Goswami became the head of the Goswamis, and with Jiva Goswami leading the Goswamis, they purchased the Rasa Stala there, where Lord Krishna's Rasa Lila was performed. That was purchased by Jiva Goswami. He did many important things to establish the position of Vaishnavism there in Vrindavan. So very much indebted to the Goswamis, who are all the direct disciples of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, comes, he, he, he comes as a devotee. He's coming to teach all of us, be a devotee. You know? Don't try and be God. Just simply be a devotee. And devotee means the servant of the servant of the servant, many times a servant. This is our position. Remember, we have to be humble. We are insignificant souls. We are coming from this material world. 
What is our position in this material world? We are nobody. We are very insignificant. We are so fortunate to have some connection just to get some mercy from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So let us hold on to the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya and remember the teachings of Lord Krishna and in this way surely our life can become successful and we can go back home, back to Godhead sometime. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for your class. We have one question in the chat room from Facebook listener. And if you can read it out, I'll write it out for you. In the chat room, the question says, Why do you have many incarnations of God in your religion? Why is not so in the Bible or the Quran? Kulibale from the Gambia is asking from Facebook. Why we have many connections? Incarnations of God. Incarnations or oh, incarnations. Religion, while in the Christian religion or in the Quran is not the same. And the listener is writing him from the Gambia, even on Facebook. Uh -huh. You have to understand our teachings are going back much longer time. They're covering a much wider period of time than Christianity and Islam. Christianity and Islam taught in very special conditions. Christian religion is taught in the desert to people who are not very educated can understand very much. So even what they under, even even what Jesus was teaching, still they crucified him. They cannot understand very much. Uh, people were just in the, in the desert, uh, you know, they didn't have much education, didn't have a lot of real culture or civilization there. So he has to speak according to their ability to understand. So he gave them what they, what they could, as much as they could understand, but still, even with what he gave them, they ended up crucifying him. So you want to understand more, like I said, you want to understand God, you have to accept that God has inconceivable powers. If you accept God as a person, you have to understand he's not a person of this material world because we're so conditioned we're so limited in our thinking we're just like some people often they're just like frogs in the well the frog in the well is trying to understand the ocean and you come and tell the frog about the ocean and the frog is saying oh is the ocean three times as big as my well oh it's the ocean four times as big as my well how can you know how can the frog in the well understand the ocean so these people, you know, they're saying Christian or Muslim, like that, they're trying to understand God, but they, they have their very limited thinking about God. They have very, very limited, very shallow, limited thinking, trying to understand God by their limited, imperfect senses. So you want to understand God, you have to be willing to hear. You have to be willing to hear from authorities. And this, this is knowledge which has been in existence for a very, very long time. This is a very ancient culture. It's coming from a very ancient civilization. And it's all written there in Sanskrit language. So, yeah, you have to be a little open-minded to understand these things, to hear about the Lord and His different incarnations. So we ask you, is God limited or unlimited? If you say He is unlimited, then you can understand He has many different incarnations and different forms and He comes at different times. But if you say God is limited, then how can you ever understand God? You put Him on the same level as we are, we are limited. Because we are limited, you make God also limited. 
How can it be? So there's a lot of problem in education. People are not very well educated spiritually. They have this very, very limited thinking, can only understand according to their own level, own the, their own way of thinking. We try want to understand God, you have to go beyond our own thinking, beyond that range of our mind and senses. You never understand with our limited mind and senses. And so when you become when you become submissive, when you become ready to hear, then you can actually understand. Okay? Yes, Maharaj, thank you for the answer. Prabhu Shiva, anybody have any other question, please? Raise your hand. Then permission to unmute yourself. I have a question. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for the beautiful class. Uh, in the beginning of your lecture, you mentioned how um, uh, in Kali Yuga, there is no Lila Avatar. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not come as a Lila Avatar. Of course, he came as Kali, Kali Yuga, a Yuga Avatar. But uh, I'm thinking the Lord performed so many wonderful pastimes. So, can we say that He's also a Lila Avatar? Maharaj? Well, the Lila avatars, generally, these pastimes which they perform, they will also go on in the spiritual world, you see. So the Lord, when He comes to perform a particular Lila, that Lila will become, it, it's, it's coming from the spiritual world, it's going on there in the spiritual world. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his lila is Sankirtan. The, of course, the Sankirtan, that's going on in the spiritual world. Sankirtan. But that is, his, that is actually the Yuga Dharma. And the, the Lord is keeping the, the law, because the law is, in the Kali Yuga, he shouldn't come. <laughs> so he's following that. You know, he made that arrangement that he shouldn't come in the Kali Yuga. For a Dalila avatar, but he comes to he just simply as the Yuga avatar to do that Sankirtan, which is not different. You can, if you say Sankirtan is a Leela, then it's, but Sankirtan is the Yuga Dharma, not just a Leela, it's a Dharma. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Another question from church. Judge, please unmute. George Amaha. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, it's very much wonderful. Uh, this kind of incarnation is, is only coming to this our planet Earth, or is happening in other planets as well as other universes. That's my question, Mother. Thank you very much. Okay, is is Lord Chaitanya's incarnation only coming on this planet, or is he coming to other planets also? Well, Lord Chaitanya, yeah, he's he's. Only coming on this planet Earth. This he comes on the Earth planet. Yeah, he he doesn't go to the other planets. He comes himself to this planet, to the earthly planet. He comes to give very special mercy on this planet. Okay. So, Maharaj, I would like to know: Is he happening? I mean, what are forms of? Uh, the incarnations, no, is it taking place in other planets also, or is only meant for this planet? Well, there are, I, I mentioned there are some incarnations that go to higher planets, 
Just like Vamana Dev, he, okay. appe he appeared in the heavenly planet. Okay. Right? Vamana Dev. Okay. And sometimes yeah. we say also, some, you know, some people we accept more that when Lord Nishringadev actually came, he was also in the higher planets. It was more there because, you know, there's some doubt whether the actual pastimes of Lord Nishringadev did. Some people say they took place here. But there seems to be evidence in the scriptures that they actually took place in the higher planets, because Harani Kashipu was okay. he was ruling the higher planets. So we tend. Okay. To, uh, so the Lord does come in the higher planets, different incarnations. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Prabhu Shivas? Yeah, thank you, Maharaj, for giving us the association. Thank you for enlivening us. Thank you for everything. We hope in the future again you will have some time to give us such wonderful classes. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you very nice. Thank you, Maharaj, for his wonderful class. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna.